Hey guys, it's Nikki and today I'm coming to you with a mini review read wrap up. A couple of weeks ago, I was sitting back and I was thinking, you know, I read way quicker than I can keep up with reviewing. Doing these individual review videos of each of my review reads that I've gone through is just, it's not working for me. So I reached out on Twitter and surprisingly, the feedback was so positive and to my betterment, I thought this was such good news and extremely helpful. I have been at war with myself. Every piece that I have as a review read on my shelf, not only the piece as well as the author deserves their own individual video. However, as I mentioned, I am reading way quicker than I can keep up with filming these reviews. Even doing written reviews. I am so behind on written reviews. I know. I'm sorry if any of the authors that I mentioned in this video are watching. Please know I will do written reviews of your pieces. I am behind. I am getting there, but it will happen. What my plan is, is to come on here weekly and share with you any of the review reads I read from the past week. So this is not going to be a weekly wrap up of everything I read. It's only going to be of my review reads. So fingers crossed this works. You guys, I used to do like monthly wrap ups and share with you everything I've read. I haven't done that in a year or more, probably longer. And uh, so there are other books that I read, but that I don't even mention on my channel or that you guys have no idea that I have read. My main priority right now is any of my review reads. This may be books that were sent to me from the author to review. It may be books that were sent to me from the publisher or even books that I picked up myself. And while talking with the author, I let them know that I would be more than happy to review these pieces. So that being said, this is my first time going into this format with mini reviews of my review reads. So this may be a little sloppy. It may be a little all over the place. Please bear with me. I have to get back into, I have to get back into that format of doing some type of wrap up. It's just, I'm not used to it anymore. So let's just give this a try and see how it goes. I'm hoping that this is going to be very helpful to me. It means hopefully I won't be sitting here every weekend filming five, six or more videos. Let's just jump into this and see how this goes. The first one I have to share with you is Beguiled by Night, A Vampire Tale by Nicole Egener. Nicole, if you're watching, I apologize if I pronounced your last name incorrectly. First and foremost, I want to point out this cover. It is absolutely stunning. And when I first connected with Nicole, it was gathering together some authors that were interested in doing some of my pre-recorded author spotlights, some that were wanting to take part in live shows, Nicole does plan on coming on to do an author spotlight video with me and she offered to send me a copy of her book and at the time I thought gosh you know what my reviews are so backlogged 100 plus books I don't know I can't take it I want to but I can't that being said, the more I started to read what this book was about and to learn more about Nicole, um, the cover and the synopsis alone of this book just pulled me right in and I just, I had to read it. I had to have it. So I planned on going and purchasing a copy and Nicole's like, no, no, no. I said I would send you a copy. So absolutely she did. Thank you so much, Nicole. And I knew I had to push it up to the top of my reviewing list because of that reason. Absolutely. And then when I showed it on my stories on Instagram, a fellow Instagram friend of mine went and purchased a copy and I I was like, well, listen here, I need to read this. I can't wait to read it. And she's like, well, I just purchased it and I'm not going to be able to hold back from reading it the second it comes in. So we planned a buddy read and that's exactly what we did. So this is not your typical vampire story with blood, guts, and gore. I mean, it does definitely have that in here, but it's very romantic, if that makes sense. It's a romanticized vampire story which I really really enjoyed and I will say that the main character is French 
And so I'm going to pronounce his name incorrectly, but let's just give it a go. And I can't jump too far into this one without giving spoilers because some of the things I want to say to you guys, to me, would definitely be a spoiler and may take away from the story if you chose to pick it up. So I do have to be careful and vague with this one, but I'm hoping I'm getting my point across without spoiling anything for you. In this story, you're following your main character, Louis Bocolon. I probably completely butchered that. He is an ancient French vampire created in 1668 and he's now living present day Los Angeles. First off, I could not imagine living forever, never knowing where your end is going to be, having your loved ones, people you care about, becoming ill around you, losing them, and having to say goodbye to all of them and having to mourn over them. Having to experience so many traumatizing life events, having to adapt and change with the world as the world changes as the people the styles all of that changes having to relocate in a sense because i'm sure people around you are going to start to wonder why you don't look a day older as the years go by the one piece of the story that i want to talk about so much i can't because i really feel like it's going to take away from the story there is one character in particular that was extra special to Lewis and he sadly lost her and feels a sense that it might be because of him and he he wants to go back in time and he wants to change what happened for the betterment and he doesn't want to say goodbye. I really enjoyed this story. I gave it a four to five stars. I, my only small, very minor downfall with this story is some of the time differences from year to year. The jumps would confuse me and I would be a little thrown off. But that could be the reader itself. It could be that I had things going on around me that I didn't realize were pulling my attention away from the story story um, but this was really good this was like I said different from other vampire stories that I have read it um, does have that dark side it does have triggers it does have blood guts and gore but there's also so much passion and Nicole's writing was fantastic the characters were breathtaking I just love them and you couldn't help but feel for them the storyline and the whole concept around the story was really well done so I really enjoyed this story I really enjoyed getting to buddy read it with somebody because I had somebody that I could discuss this along the way I look forward to seeing what else Nicole releases in the future she is absolutely a wonderful wonderful writer and and uh, I just love that she could bring the dark and the romantic side of a vampire and not overdo it because I am not huge on like romance stories or ooey gooey. Mm, I love you. Let's run away with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I do like my dark reads. I don't mind if there's a splash of romance. And that's exactly what this had in here. There was a splash of romance and you just really felt for those characters and you wanted the best for them. And it was sad to see what may happen between the two of them. So yes, I am not doing this book justice. It was really, really good. And I do, I look forward to Nicole's work in the future. Thank you so much, Nicole, for sending me that copy. It is absolutely stunning. So the next two pieces I have here are by the same author and it's Pray Lied Eve by Lydia Peaver and Pray Lied Eve 2. So these are short stories. It says three tales of the untoward and then it says further tales of the untoward by Lydia Peaver. If you guys don't know who Lydia is, she's typical books here on YouTube. She's got a fantastic channel. She is just that perfect dark eerie goodness that I love. I absolutely love her content and she happens to be a fellow Canadian. Anyhow, I was doing a giveaway and I reached out to her because I thought, you know, I can't just have male Canadian horror authors for this giveaway. And so I reached out to her and she was like, yes, absolutely. I'm so happy she was willing to contribute. And she sent me copies for myself of these two short story collections, as well as another piece by her that I haven't got to yet. And I was so excited because it gave me the chance of taking a look at her writing and just devouring it and consuming it and enjoying it for myself. I'm just going to pop this around so you can see more of this cover as well. These short stories were phenomenal 
phenomenal. I gave both of these collections a five out of five stars. There was something so different about each of the stories that just would sink its teeth into me and I would be so intrigued. I couldn't stop reading. I really, really enjoyed these stories. And Lydia's writing style and her word choice, her descriptions were so good. It really would just bring the whole atmosphere of the stories together. I could really picture and see everything in front of me, which means I can't wait to get to the other piece that she sent to me because I know it's going to be just as good. I am so looking forward to it. I couldn't even pick out a favorite from the short story collections. They were all so good. Thank you, Lydia. If you see this, thank you so much for sending me a copy of these. I really, really enjoyed it. I can't wait to read the other piece as well as I can't wait to see what else you release out into the world that I'll have to get my hands on. And if you don't know Lydia, like I said, go and head over to any of her socials. I'll link them down below so you can go and check her out. Follow her on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And yeah, you, you won't regret it because she's phenomenal. Next book I have here is Lullaby by Daniel Barnett. This is volume two in the Nightmare Land Chronicles. If you don't know, I recently did a live show with Daniel Barnett on my channel as well as with some of my adored fellow booktubers. And I was hoping that I would at least get to volume two before that live and I did. And Lullaby carries on with the story from book one and I don't want to say too much without giving too much away. If you've read the Nightmare Land Chronicles you'll know what I'm talking about but this just gets darker and creepier and scarier and so delicious. So Nightmare Land is basically when the world goes dark and as the world goes dark people start to go a little weird. I am just loving this series so far. I can't wait to dive into book three. I did buddy read this with Linda from Linda's World of Books. Her and I, I assume, are going to slowly go on and buddy read the rest of the series or the books that are out so far. Um, Daniel is an awesome, awesome guy. His writing is fantastic. It's so dark, yet it's poetic. His prose are crisp and clean. Everything about his story just flows and I cannot wait to read on with this series. I, I also have another piece by Daniel on my shelves that I'm looking forward to getting to because I have a feeling it's going to be just as good. Five out of five stars for this. The next book I read is The People by Fright Vision. This is book nine in the Fright Vision series. And I read it alongside Logan to and from school on our commute. We really enjoyed this story. This is probably the first Fright Vision story that really dove into some harder topics and it was done so well. The story was fast paced. It was exciting. You're following your main character who has lost his best friend and his true connection with so many things that he loved in life. And he's not ready to let his friend go just yet or to believe that he is gone and he basically goes searching for him. This was so good. Logan and I enjoyed it so much. You guys already know that we just love the Fright Vision series here. This, I keep saying this every time I read another one of the books, I'm like, this has got to be my favorite. This is, but this definitely, there was something about this that was the icing on the cake. I really, really enjoyed this one. I look forward to seeing what else we can expect from Fright Vision. I know that Joshua Marcella is going to be a part of one of these books and I can't wait to see what he comes up with. But yeah, we are huge fans of Fright Vision in this house. Five out of five stars, really enjoyed this and Logan really enjoyed it as well. Well, you don't just have to be a middle grader to read these spooky reads. The next piece I have here is Field of Fiends by Nicholas Gray, our one and only spooky noodles. I loved this novella, five out of five stars. This is a story about brothers. The younger brother is adopted and they often get asked or get rude comments asking how they can be brothers when they have two different skin colors. But the older brother doesn't care. He loves his adopted younger brother. He doesn't even see him as being adopted. He's just, he's his family. He's somebody he absolutely loves. And he's so willing to invite or to include his brother in any of his fun games that he goes and does with his friends or anything that he does. And I just, I love that aspect of this story. One night they decide that they're going to sneak out to this corn maze, this corn field, and they're going to play this game that they love to play. They find out quite quickly 
that they're not alone in that field. And let me just tell you, this gets dark very quickly, very fast. Like I said, it's just a novella. It's a quick read, but it is packed full of so much dark, gruesome goodness. I was hooked. I also will let you guys know that this is on audiobook and I downloaded the audiobook and the audiobook version was so good as well. Something that you can listen to in like the matter of like a half an hour. Nick is just killing it with what he releases. I'm loving everything he's putting out there. I can't wait for more. I just realized that I keep calling this a novella when it's a novelette. Also, Nick, thank you so much for putting me in the acknowledgements. That means so much to me to see my name there. I tell you, my heart went all ooey gooey. It means so much to me. I can't wait to see what you release next, Nick, because I'm a fan and you are an auto buy and I will support you till day's end. Okay, the next couple pieces, I don't have physical copies, so I will pop up a photo. First one is The Nothing That Is by Kyle Winkler. If you guys don't know, I also did a live show recently with Kyle and Linda from Linda's World of Books where we got to know more about him and his work. This was his debut horror release. It is cosmic horror and it will fuck you up. That's about all I'm gonna say. This story, I read it forever ago and I'm still having a hard time wrapping my brain around what happened. This story will mess you up. I'm so happy I read it with Linda. Um, being able to buddy read this with somebody, it gave me somebody to discuss it with, but we thought we knew what was happening. We had a good long discussion on what we thought was happening with this main character and through the whole entire story. Um, but we found out we were wrong during that live show because the main character, Cade, is not going crazy. This story is about your main character, Cade. He works for a catering company. His boss is a complete asshole. And one day this odd, weird, distorted, jumbled call comes through by a gentleman that we are going to call or that is called Mr. Dinosaur that has a very odd, very rare request. And Cade feels like this is his moment because we're talking about a good amount of money that he can make to go and do this on his own outside of the catering company. And maybe this can push him in the direction of doing good by himself and for his future. And it just goes down. This is where the story just goes completely messed up. It's all over the place. It was one hell of a wild ride. My brain is still mush from it, but the writing was really good. And clearly it's cosmic horror. So if you're looking for cosmic horror that is going to just screw with your mind and that you are going to have a problem weeks down the line trying to get your thoughts out of this story, then this is definitely the one for you. I will say, however, if you were going to read it, read it alongside someone if you can, a buddy read or a book club, you know, get your book club, you know, all together and down to read this. So because it, it will bring up a lot of discussion and you will think you understand what's going on, but you don't, you don't. I gave this one a four out of five stars. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what else Kyle puts out there for his debut horror piece being this messed up. I mean, I would like to see what else this guy can do because I mean, it shows talent when he can throw something out there like this and where by the end of the story, you still haven't put together what's happening and there was no way through the story where you felt that any part of the story was predictable. It's just, no, there's no, there's no freaking way. If you think you can handle it, go check it out. And the last piece I have to discuss is True Crime by Samantha Kolsnick. I feel like I am so off the game with this. This came out forever ago or what feels like forever ago. It has been on my list since the day. No, you know, scratch that before it even released. And this story was just, it was crazy. I am not going to go too far into what this story is about because it has been all around the community, especially in the horror community. And I knew I had to get to it at some point, but I kept having to put it off, put it off. But when I saw that it was on audiobook, I picked it up and my goodness, was it a good read. I am so happy that I checked it out. It is another one that's going to really mess with you because you're going to feel for the characters. You're going to, you're going to sympathize with them, but they may also be evil people in themselves. It, the writing 
was so good. Samantha did such a phenomenal job. She definitely has talent. I look forward to reading more of her work. I give this one a four out of five stars. I tell you to go out and read it, but the chances are you've probably already read it. Uh, yeah, definitely. You guys, there's so much talent out here. These authors are just killing it. It was so such a good reading experience over the last couple weeks. That's all the books that I have to talk about for this week wrap up. I hope you guys like the idea of having these mini review. If you've read any of these, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. No spoilers, please. If any of these pique your interest or intrigue you, let me know. That's it for me today. I will see you guys all in my next bookish video. Bye.